Ben Carson is a guy who's been getting a lot of attention for uh, some possible prevarications, to be polite, uh, in his past. Uh, another word for that is he's been lying about a ton of things. Now, I'm going to show you a lot of those lies right now, so buckle up. First, uh, I want to go to people who think it's unfair. Obviously, the Republicans think it's unfair to go into his past. They view any question uh, to be a gotcha question. Yeah, well, if the guy said he got a full scholarship to West Point and it turns out he didn't, gotcha, you lied about that. That's relevant. But it's not just Republicans. Bernie Sanders uh, doesn't love it either. He said, I think it might be a better idea. I know it's a crazy idea, but maybe we could focus on the issues impacting the American people and what candidates are saying rather than just spending so much time exploring their lives of 30 or 40 years ago. I don't agree, and I'll tell you why. So I, don't get me wrong, should we spend time on his policies? Of course! And I've already shown you his tax plan and why it's preposterous and how much uh, it's going to help the rich. Okay, So we do plenty of that. But at the same time, we have to know who we're electing. It's the most important job on the planet. They can unilaterally start wars with other countries. What do they believe? And what this guy believes is partly based on his interpretation of seven-day Adventists. Jesus and Lord mercy, I don't know what that means he believes, right? And what the policy implications of that are. But also, are, are you a person we can trust? Well, then the question of whether you've been lying your whole life is very relevant. So to me, the interesting part isn't necessarily the lies themselves, although they are whoppers, as you're about to see. But remember, Donald Trump lies over and over again. I mean, he's a pathological liar. So it's not like this is something new to politicians. <laughs> My God, the politicians do it endlessly, right? But in his particular case, the question is, why did he make up the lies that he did? That's the most important part, and that's what we'll get to tonight. So first, let me go back to the beginning. In the beginning, his classmates described him this way. Now, he claims he was violent. I'll tell you why he claims that in a second. But uh, his classmates, when he was growing up in elementary uh, school, junior high, high school, said, said, no, 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 no. You almost always wore one of those little pocket protectors, <laughs> you know, uh, carried around a briefcase, even in high school and college, like a little brown briefcase. Very studious, quiet guy. Uh, and Thomas Noonan, who was his former roommate uh, in college, said he would go to bed at like 9 p.m. and we'd get up at 4 a.m. or 5 a.m., put on a suit, a tie, and a jacket, and a button-down shirt, and study in the early morning. Now, there's no shame in that. That is a great story. So here's a kid who came out of Detroit, got into Yale, doesn't party like everybody else in college. Yes, some at the time might call him a nerd, a dork, whatever you want to call him. He gets up in the morning, puts on a button-down shirt, and goes to work. That's something to be greatly admired. There's nothing wrong with that story. That story is fantastic. But he didn't go with that story. He went with a different story. And why he went with a different story is the interesting part. Now, part of it has to do with religion. He's got to go get both religious voters. And remember, he's been trying to sell books for 30 years now. Right, one book after another about how great he is. He called one of his books Gifted Hands. That's his autobiography. Who says about themselves gifted hands? It's like if I did an autobiography and I wrote, called it Gifted Mouth, which I believe could have other implications, or Gifted Tongue, <laughs> other than the fact that it might be a little misleading. It's preposterous. Who says that about themselves? This guy's been running a marketing campaign about his career for decades. Now, part of that story is, when I first started, I was a young black kid who was poor, violent, although there's no evidence of that, but he has to build that story, and even dumb. But you know who saved me? Jesus. So now there are pictures of him, of Jesus and Bibles, etc., all over his house. But in 2009, in his Maryland house, when a reporter came in, they noticed this picture, which was up in The Guardian. People are now calling that black Klingon Jesus. <laughs> okay. I don't know why he decided to have a self-portrait made with black Klingon Jesus, but I do know it has something to do with, I'm not sure it, he intended him for him to be black or Klingon, but the idea is, this is my Jesus buddy. I'm with Jesus. It's a literal representation of his marketing campaign. Hey, don't get me wrong. I'm with Jesus. Now, um, the first set of lies he got caught on was this idea that he had this violent past. Now, CNN went back and checked, so many media organizations have checked, and all these guys who are his supporters who are his friends, they're like, 
Hey, look, I, I believe Ben. If he says he had a violent past, I believe him. But we never heard about it. I think we would have heard about it in school. I think we would have heard about it as friends. We never heard about it, right? So he claims he went after his mom with a hammer. And that is pretty violent. Nobody in his family can attest to that. We ask, hey, can we talk to your brother? You say in your story that your brother's the one that held you back and made sure you didn't hit your mom with a hammer. Mysteriously, the brother doesn't want to talk about it. Can we talk to your mom? No, she's got Alzheimer's, so don't talk to her. Okay. Can we talk to anybody about how you're going to go after your mom with a hammer? Nope. Okay, and then he claims he, in many other instances he attacked some kid with a lock and put a three-inch gash on his head. There are no school records of that. He can't name the kids. Uh, and then he attempted to, to, among many others, stab another guy, and, but the blade broke off when he hit his gigantic buckle belt. I thought they were from Detroit, not from Texas. Okay, That is a preposterous story. Anyone who has ever lied before, and any single guy out there, you know who I'm talking about, okay, you know that's a ridiculous lie. Really, he had a giant buckle belt and the blade broke off. What a stroke of luck, right? Not reported anywhere, not in any school records. He said, oh, they were guys named Bob and Jerry. Turns out when uh, they look through the records, there's not even a Bob or a Jerry. They can re reach out to any Bob or Jerry that might have been in any school with them. They're, they say, no, absolutely not. That never happened. So he says, oh, no, I made up those names. In fact, let me tell you. I don't like to generally bring them in. The names I use, for instance, are fictitious names because I don't want to bring people into something like this because I know what you guys do to their lives. In other words, there are no such people. <laughs> oh, please, you're running for president of the United States. You're taking all this heat, and now you're telling me, oh, yeah, yeah, I made up the names of the people that I pretended to stab, etc. But uh, trust me that they exist. And even though they are my friends now, or in the case of the stabbing, he claims that it was a relative. Even though that relative could save my presidential campaign, I won't bring him forward. Uh, it's to protect him. No, all we, he would have to do is, yeah, Ben came, we, had a, we were 14 years old, we had a disagreement. He did this crazy thing and I can't believe it hit my buckle belt. I, I forgave him decades ago, that's okay. That's all, that's it, nobody's going to pick that apart. Just produce the guy, right? You can't produce him because he doesn't exist, because you're a pathological liar, okay? Now, the second point was, Hey, West Point, uh, uh, you know, I, I was in ROTC, he was, right? And then I was so uh, decorated that I had all these people come over, including General Westmoreland, who was a huge general back in the day, and they offered me a, a, a full scholarship to West Point. Now, it turns out there are no scholarships to West Point. If you get accepted, it's free. General Westmoreland wasn't there on the day that Ben Carson describes, and it turns out he never even applied to West Point. Now, of course, people are jumping in and saying, oh, you have liberal media. Uh, they're uh, painting it like he said he got a full scholarship to West Point. Well, that's not exactly what he said, really. Let's go to the tape and find out. You know, that really inspired me to get into ROTC and to, to really work very hard. And, you know, fortunately, I became the, the city executive officer and had a chance to meet General Westmoreland and go to Congressional Medal of Honor dinners and was offered a full scholarship to West Point and have always had deep affection uh, for the military. A full scholarship to West Point. I mean, dude, before you lie, just look it up. Look to see if they have full scholarships. <laughs> Who, he claims that at the dinner, they're like, oh, would you like a full scholarship? And so he technically didn't apply, but he was offered the scholarship. That's not how it works. They don't go to dinner and be like, hey, before you apply to West Point, here, you're already admitted before you applied, and you have a full scholarship that doesn't exist. Guy lies. That's what he does. That's all of this marketing, all the campaigns, all the gifted hands. Everything is one giant lie. I'm not anywhere near done. Then there's a story about uh, when he's in Yale and the professor comes and and does this uh, study. Okay, and it turns out he's the only honest guy at Yale. Come on, he didn't really say that, right? Well, let's go to Dr. Ben Carson's actual words. The professor came toward me. With her was a photographer for the Yale Daily News who paused and snapped my picture. A hoax, the teacher said. We wanted to see who was the most honest student in the class. What's he describing here? He said that he went to this class called uh, Perceptions 301, and they were told that they had taken this uh, final, but that uh, the final had been lost, and that they were all going to get a new final, 150 kids in the class. And uh, the new final was twice as hard as the old final, and so the students, other students were so mad and they walked out, but not Ben Carson. 
because he's the only honest guy at Yale. And it turns out it was a study to find the only honest guy at Yale. He stood there and he took the test anyway. Out of 150 people, he's the only one to take a final, once the professors told him, right? Well, of course, what are you going to do? You're going to look into this amazing story, right? And when the Wall Street Journal, owned by Rupert Murdoch and News Corp, uh, so no liberal publication, says no photo identifying Mr. Carson as a student ever ran, according to the Dale, Yale Daily News Archives, so that picture story is total crock, and no stories from that era mention a class called Perceptions 301. Uh, he even made up the class. And we'll, I'll show you why, where he got that from in a second. Yale librarian Clarence Spy said Friday there was no psychology course by that name or class number during any of Mr. Carson's years at Yale. He never took that class. There was no such final. So where the hell did he get this crazy idea? It turns out back then uh, the Yale Daily News ran a parody. I know that because it's labeled parody on the top of it. Here, let's show it to you. And now Kevin Drum at Mother Jones found this, uh, among others. It says parody, and then it explains strictly off the record a story where a psychology class is told that the exams were uh, uh, taken away, and that it was, uh, in fact, they were taking, asked to take the exam again, but it was proven to be a hoax. Yada yada. He took a parody from the student paper, pretended it was real, and then pretended it showed him as the only honest person in that class. Now, I would call that ironic, because that's about as dishonest a thing you could do. The whole point of that story is, uh, I'm the only honest one. Everyone else, my critics, everybody else, they're all liars, liberal media, this, that. But I, I, I'm a pure, pure soul. Okay, so that is a number of lies so far, but we're not anywhere done yet. It turns out, and again, this is where it gets interesting as to why he's lying. He told a story about his chemistry class. So he gets a scholarship to go to Yale. So obviously he's done very well. He gets to Yale and finds out that he's unprepared, especially for chemistry. And this is what happens next. And uh, we were right there the day before the final. And my grades were so bad that even if I had gotten an A on the final, I still would have failed. That's how bad it was. So there I was, uh, night before, thinking about my life. I said, Lord, I, medicine is the only thing I ever wanted to do. I always thought that's what you wanted for me. And yet, it looks like I'm going to fail chemistry. I'm not going to go to medical school. I said, so would you please tell me what it is you really want me to do? Or alternatively and preferably, work a miracle. And uh, <laughs> I picked up that big chemistry book. I was going to learn the whole thing that night. And uh, of course, I fell asleep, dreamed I was in this large auditorium, just me and a nebulous figure working out chemistry problems. And I awakened early in the morning. That dream was so vivid in my mind. I picked up my book. I started looking up the stuff that I dreamed about. And when I went to take the test the next morning, it was like the twilight zone. I opened that book and I recognized the first problem. It was one of the ones I dreamed about. And the next and the next and the next. And I aced the exam and, uh, you know, got a good mark in chemistry. It worked out okay. But, uh, <laughs> You're telling me an angel taught you chemistry in your sleep and you went from an F, not knowing anything about chemistry, trying to pick up the book in the first place, by the way, you might have wanted to pick up the book earlier, uh, to getting, what you know what he got on that test? A 97. No, that's not what happened. And anyone who went to school knows that's not what happened. Look, I'm not begrudging him his miracle stories. I know religious people feel this way. So for example, there's another story where he gets uh, in, a, in a car accident, the car spins around and around, they're almost going to go off a cliff. That probably is part is probably not true. But anyway, I'm sure that their car spilled out and his future wife was in the car, Candy Carson, they're not uh, married at the time. Uh, they're uh, both going to Yale, they both go back to Detroit to teach people how to get into Yale. That's great, and I love him for it. And, and the car spins out, but they don't die. They, they both decide it's a miracle and that God has saved them uh, for a very specific purpose. Okay, a lot of people believe that. Of course, me being agnostic, I'd say, why did God cause the accident in the first place? Okay, but I don't begrudge him that. That's, that's not one of the lies. I don't care about that, right? So, but in this case, with the chemistry and the mysterious angel in your sleep, that's bullshit. 
that didn't happen. And much more interestingly though is, why tell that story? Isn't it a better story? If you study, you're a kid out of Detroit, you were poor, you studied hard, you got up at four in the morning every day, you wore your button down shirt, and you studied chemistry. And you learned chemistry so well, you got a 97 on your final at Yale. Isn't that a better story? No, but that doesn't fit the narrative that the people buying his books, the evangelical base that he's appealing to, and Republican voters want to hear. They don't want to hear that story. Here's the story they want to hear. You were a violent black kid going around stabbing people, hammering your own mom or trying to, and you were also dumb. You were failing chemistry. Of course, you're dumb. And then through the miracle of Jesus Christ, you were saved. And since you gave your life over to Jesus, then he gave you gifted hands, he sent you an angel to give you a miracle to get you the 97 on the chemistry exam, and now, oh, it's the white man's dream. A dumb, violent black kid turned into a perfectly docile, good member of society who tells them all the time, by the way, white people are right and black people's culture is wrong, and all of that is because of Jesus. Perfect. Now that's a story that sells books. That's a story that's much, much worse than the truth. But it sells books and it gets Republican voters. To this day, Ben Carson argues for the Confederate flag. He says the Confederate flag should be flown at NASCAR races. Ooh, that story sells. That's exactly what white wanted people want to hear, especially Republican voters. Of course not all white people. But the people who buy his books, the people who might vote for him. That's the story they want to hear from a black surgeon, okay? Now, if you're not convinced that uh, there are more lies ahead, I mean, I don't know that this is enough, and you're not convinced uh, about why he's lying. All right, let's go to one more lie. Now, he, this is about when MLK is shot. Now, everybody on campus, of course, is greatly affected by this, and uh, an African-American community is greatly affected that Martin Luther King has been shot. Uh, but Mr. Carson has an interesting view of what happened on that particular day. Let's hear him out. You know, that day is still so vivid in my memory. Um, students, the black students, were incredibly angry. And uh, many of them were going around in groups uh, looking for any white person they could find and just beating the tar out of them. And, uh, you know, I was very concerned. And I happened to be the, the lab assistant, the biology lab assistant. And I had a key to the lab, so you know I was getting white students into the lab and locking the lab so that they could hide until the whole thing was over. In no way was I at a point where I was ready to blame <laughs> all white people for that. So now he's made himself into the Oscar Schindler for white people. Oh, the, all the savages, the violent blacks, they were coming to get the white people. And who was the only honest man at Yale? The one guy who could save all the good white folks. It was Ben Carson. Now, Wall Street Journal looked into this as well. Quote, it couldn't be confirmed in interviews with half a dozen of Mr. Carson's classmates and his high school physics teacher. The students all remembered the riot. None recalled hearing about white students hiding in the biology lab. And Mr. Carson couldn't remember any names of those he sheltered. See, it's all part of the same narrative. Those of you who are racist among white voters and book buyers and people who pay me for my speeches, whew, have I got the perfect speech for you? Have I got the perfect story for you? You, all of your biases and stereotypes, I can confirm them. That's exactly how. All black people are, but don't worry, I'm here to save you, and I'm here to save them. I'll find them black cling on Jesus, okay, I'll bring him along, and together we'll, we'll show you that if only they listen to you, then their culture could be fixed. But until then, don't worry, if they get out of hand, I'll protect you. See, they are weird lies if you don't understand the narrative he's trying to sell. When you understand the narrative he's trying to sell, well, then that makes a lot of sense.